All right, guys, Automated Garage back today. We're going to experiment with making this a waste oil burner, as we mentioned when we built it in the last video. So uh, let me show you what we're doing here today. So, so far, I've taken one of my drums, which, you know, if y'all have seen me, I've made my own uh, oil catch drum there out of these. Uh, we got several of these that we had back in the barn. But anyways, this one's full of oil. So I experimented with doing this because I know it's got to have, be able to pull a little bit of air so it doesn't get vapor lock as the oil level drops. So we glue that fitting in there, which screws into here. These are the same fittings, I believe, as a regular 55 gallon drum. Um, a garden hose fitting screwed right in here. So then I have a valve right at the tank. And I wanted to fix it where I could swap from drum to drum pretty easy. So I had this other male garden hose fitting that goes in here. This is just a scrap piece of hose I had laying around. I've got another short piece of a threaded brass. Uh, I don't know what the thread pitch is. It goes into this stainless steel line that I had that I think somebody I knew was throwing it away. So I threaded that on there. This may actually end up being a little too long for what we're wanting to do, but we'll see. And then down here, I got the same uh, double male piece here that goes into a, a brass ball valve that I had laying around with another. This is the cutoff of that other piece I was telling you about on the other end with a clear piece of hose and we're going to do the clear hose so that we can see about how fast the oil's dripping or running and be able to adjust it by the ball valve i hope um we're then going to hook that clear hose up to our soft copper so the only thing i have left to make and figure out is the uh i don't know what pipe i'm going to use but anyways i got to make the 90 that's going to go in and down into a bowl or a pot in there where the, the oil will run out of the copper tube and the tube that's going around the copper will have air blowing in it to uh, help vaporize the oil, feed the fire, and uh, keep the copper tube cooled so it doesn't coke up with oil. Um, I think the channel that I've watched some, Jerry's DIY, I'm kind of following his idea on this. Um, never seen anybody do it in a double barrel stove, but we're gonna give it a try. So the idea is this is gonna go up there on the loft and gravity feed down into this barrel. So I'm gonna go over here and kind of do some thinking and figuring out on feeding that in there. All right, so there is our tube. It will sit right over our stainless steel bowl. So the oil will come out of this. The air is gonna come out of the big pipe to keep this cool so the oil doesn't coke up on this uh, half inch copper. Um, this is gonna come out of the back of the stove. It's gonna turn up and then it's gonna hook to that clear piece there which we have to change this, whole, uh, this hose because uh, it's leaking oil, obviously. So I have some rubber hose. I think we're gonna run it out of. This sticks, that's the back of the uh, stove right there. So we come back this far, then our copper turns up. And what I've decided to do is I took this extra piece here, notched it, and it's just gonna fit around there just like that, which you can see I already welded it before I realized I messed up. Be a pretty tight fit. We can probably put some RTV silicone around that and seal it up good. We'll hook our blower right here. That'll blow the air around the copper pipe and really feed the fire. So before, the reason I had to cut this back off real quick, which I'm glad I caught myself, this is the ring. This is the ring off of the uh, Rhino muffler, which we're going to take it, which I'm gonna have to clean this up now, I bet. But it's gonna slide over here and I'm gonna use these holes to uh, bolt this to the back of the stove. And hopefully that'll be stout enough to uh, hold this and give us our inch off the bottom of our bowl. If not, I may have to make one little support or something off of here also. I don't know how stout that metal on the back of that barrel is gonna be, but uh, that came out to be a pretty good idea. And that's gonna seal this up relatively tight on the back of the stove too. So uh, I'm gonna get that on, weld it up, weld that piece on, and then we'll be ready to actually mount this and then start figuring out getting the oil up there and hooking it up to the back. And then uh, won't be too long, I'll be ready to fire this thing up. Tried this stove set up the other night, it got late. I was supposed to be getting in the house and uh, I just wanted to give it a quick try. So I'm gonna show you a quick clip of this hodgepodge of hoses and stuff we got together to give it a try. So after we've tried it, um, not happy with this valve, it's too hard to adjust. So I've gone and bought a few things. Uh, I think I spent about 50 bucks on everything all together 
to get this all hooked up um, a much better, nicer looking way than what we got here. Let me show you what we got. So I got a 10 foot of three quarter clear tubing. I thought that would be nice to be able to see uh, if for some reason it wasn't flowing good or something like that. So anyways, we got uh, clear tubing. I got some solder to solder these two fittings on the end of my copper where it comes out the back of the stove. So this will come up at a 45. And then this is a half to quarter coupling. And this hose fits just right over that. So then we'll hose clamp the clear hose there. We got us a needle valve. Um, this is gonna take it from our hose to our needle valve there. And then out of the needle valve, I bought this little turn down plastic piece that will go into our funnel, like we said, so we can see the drip and adjust it way more efficiently with this needle valve. So I'm gonna get busy taking all that down and putting all this up. All right, we got all of our new stuff run. Needle valve runs into the funnel here. Clear hose goes down to the two pieces I soldered onto my copper that runs in there. We got our blow dryer hooked up to the hose back there. I think it blows a little bit too hard, um, but we'll see, it's what I got for now. So we're just gonna put, this is a mix of some used oil and kerosene. Let that go for just a second and then we're going to start our oil drip so now as a reference that's already heating up because that was i think it was 47 degrees a minute ago the metal on this and now down here that's already heating up quick i didn't even started the oil drip yet i'm gonna try to do the smallest strain without being a drip See what that does. So now I just kicked the fan on. It says that's 554, 57. It's 587. Well, six. It's been about five minutes. Kick our fan on back here. It's pretty warm. So that's about as low as I can go in there my drip like this otherwise it, I'm not gonna say it wants to go out but it doesn't start creating a whole round flame coming out of that bowl I have in there so about that right there is about as low as I can go and keep it maintained pretty well hope y'all enjoyed the video on us modding our double barrel stove to burn all this used motor oil we got sitting around here and really heat this thing up quick and hopefully heat this shop up quick and uh, so now the next thing when I have some spare time which probably won't happen but we're going to start insulating the shop up and hold this heat in here that much better. So it's Automated Garage signing out. <clears throat> like, subscribe, comment, check us out at Facebook, Instagram, and Rumble. If you didn't watch the video of us building a double barrel stove, go check that out. Go check the rest of our channel out if you're into Ford stuff, Power Strokes, uh, 6.7s, 6.0s, 7.3s. Go check all that out. We'll holler at y'all later.